Welcome Advantage Associate and thank you for taking the time to review this short video outlining the four moms display installation in Bye Bye Baby Stores. In no way is this video intended to be a replacement for any of the instructional files posted to your documents in JET. This is for supplemental purposes only and will be a basic walkthrough of how the display is put together. If you are the team lead for this project, you should have already conducted a pre-call 24 to 72 hours in advance to determine with the store that the fixture has arrived, that your scheduled date and time is acceptable for the store, that the store has determined the final display location, has a power drop or extension cord available, and who you will be working with the day of install. You will need a variety of tools for this project, including a Phillips head screwdriver, box cutter, optional is a drill, a socket wrench, short extension, 3 8 inch socket, wire cutters, tape measure, ammonia-free glass cleaner, clean rags, and an M4 Allen wrench, which is included in the display shipment. When you're ready, you'll go to your Bye Bye Baby store at your scheduled date and time and meet your partner. If arriving before store hours, you'll need to locate the doorbell, typically to the left of the entryway on the front of the store. Work with management to locate the display palette, which is large and difficult to miss. There are labels on the side of the display that call out that this is a four moms aisle display and to hold for Advantage Solutions. You will need assistance from the store and a pallet jack to move the palletized display to the sales floor. After removing the outer carton, you'll need to take inventory of the items included in the display to ensure that none are missing or damaged. There are call report questions to reflect this. In addition to these items, you will need power accessible. The store should have ensured that a power drop is available above the final display installation location prior to your visit, as was determined in the pre-call. If no power drop is available, the store will need to supply you with an extension cord so that you can properly set up and test all the components of the display. If you're completing this installation during business hours, you'll need to be mindful of your area and keep it clean and free of debris. Some stores have garbage receptacles like this available for you to use. Your first step will be ensuring that the both TVs sent are functional. You'll do this by plugging the TVs into a nearby outlet and ensuring simply that they power on and bring you to the main menu screen for setup. Now that you've confirmed that the TVs are both functional and you have power routed to the display, you can start prepping some of the interior display components. You'll start with the power strip, which comes in the hardware box. Unpack the power strip and one six inch strip of Velcro, which you'll adhere to the center on the back of the power strip. Remember that the power strip is going to be the only item that plugs into the power drop provided by management. All other power cables must be plugged into the power strip in order for the display to function. Next, you'll set up one TV remote and one Micro Player remote, although you will receive two of each. Use the extra batteries from the second TV remote to power the Micro Player remote. You'll secure the remotes to the interior of the car seat podium, which will be installed later using tethers, which are being installed here. The tethers are installed with a dome cap and metal back plate, which adheres to the back side of the Micro Player remote. For the TV remote, you'll need to bend that metal bracket around the contour on the underside of the TV remote to ensure that it will adhere properly. You will then adhere one inch and a quarter strip piece of Velcro to the underside of the TV remote just under the two protruding tabs. And do not stick it to the metal plate yet. You'll then repeat the same process for the back side of the TV remote regarding the tether, only this time you'll be using the long tether, the dome cap, and the metal plate. At that point, and only at that point, can you adhere the backing of the metal plate to the other side of the Velcro strip. Next, you and your partner will move the main piece of the display, including the center upright wall, to the sales floor. 
Work with store management to determine which direction the front of the display should face so that it faces oncoming customer traffic. This will give the display maximum exposure and visibility to customers. Then carefully remove the black powder coated metal front and rear top faces and the bottom rear white metal face. It's good practice to save those screws in a plastic bag until you need them again later. Take note while removing the metal rear bottom face that the lip at the bottom of this piece faces out away from the display. This is the same way you'll put this piece back when reassembling the display. You'll now have access to the interior of the upright wall, which is where you'll mount your power strip, which you'll run all your power cables to. Velcro down the power strip between the center and right holes at the base of the center wall. Next, you'll run the power cord from the power strip up through the far right hole in the center wall, up through the center of the display, and through the grommet at the top of the display. This power cable is critical because it's where the power drop cable will run from the ceiling to the display to ensure that the display and all of its components are powered. You'll then plug in three power supply cables, two for the microplayers and one for the car seat. The car seat power cable is white and should go two spots from the left. You can find the car seat power cable packaged with the car seat, as is seen here. Now you're ready to run your cables underneath the display using the zip tie and zip tie loop provided. Bundle the ends of each of the three plugged in power cables along with the ends of the two HDMI cables and place the ends of these five cables into the loop of the zip tie. Tighten the end of the zip tie loop. One of you will pull the other end of the zip tie through the bottom of the display and up through the port and the front base deck. Ensure that the second team member is holding the cables from the rear so that the HDMI cables do not pass all the way through to the underside of the display. Once complete, cut the zip tie and discard it. You're now ready to install your first TV. Start by removing all the protective plastic film from the TV. Tip the TV up and install the four mounting screws included in the hardware box to the back side of the TV. Note that the instructions say to hand tighten the screws until they bottom out. However, if the screws screw all the way in, you'll need to back them out slightly so that the head of the screws will fit properly into the snowman holes on the center wall bracket and hold the TV firmly in place. At this point, plug in one of the HDMI cables into HDMI port one on the back side of the TV and plug the TV's power cable into the power strip. Next, install the front upper metal face by setting the bottom of the upper metal face on the top edge of the lower metal face and push the top in place. Replace all the screws that were previously removed starting at the top corners, both left and right, and working your way towards the middle. Now you can install the front bottom white acrylic using the red pieces of double-sided tape provided. Make sure you only use as many pieces of tape as is outlined in the instructional document. If you use too many, you will not have enough pieces of tape to finish this project. Note that the outward facing side of the white acrylic has a protective film that needs to be removed. This also indicates which side is front facing. Now you can install the front upper acrylic TV cover. Make sure that you thoroughly wipe the TV cover as well as the TV to remove any and all fingerprints. You will not have access to these portions of the display once the step is complete, so ensure that they are clean and free of debris. You'll also use double-sided tape as outlined in the instructions to install this piece. Now you can remove the car seat podium or platform from its box and install it on the front deck of the display. Remove the magnetic side panels to grant you access to the interior of the car seat platform. 
At this point, you'll follow the instructions to anchor the tethered remotes to the interior of the car seat platform. Next, you'll need to remove the four wing nuts from the underside of the display in order to lift the car seat deck from the platform. Plug in the car seat power cord to the car seat. Next, you'll tilt up the car seat pan. You'll see that there are three holes to the far right side. Using the center hole, you'll want to drill in the screw provided and outlined in the instructions into the base of the car seat. This essentially creates an anchor point that prevents the car seat base from sliding around atop the car seat platform. Here you can see the hole in the bottom of the deck where that screw head will sit, ensuring that it's held in place. Next, you'll install the car seat, which is very straightforward. It simply snaps in to the car seat base. Now you'll install your media players by Velcroing them to the base deck beneath the car seat platform. You'll also install SD cards according to the instructions provided in your documents in JET. Plug in one power cord to each media player as well as one HDMI cable and adhere the media players to the base deck. Next, you'll install the second TV at the rear of the display, following similar steps as were used to install the first TV. Before you finalize the mount of the second TV, make sure that you have plugged the second HDMI cable into HDMI input one on the back of the TV and plug the TV's power cable into the power strip at the base of the display. Replace the lower rear metal panel that you removed previously to access the interior of the display, ensuring that the lip at the bottom is facing outward. Reinstall the rear upper metal panel using steps similar to the replacement of the front upper metal panel. Then install the rear bottom white acrylic following similar steps to as the installation of the front lower white acrylic. Ensure that the groove at the bottom of this panel lines up with the notch at the bottom of the lower rear metal panel. Then install the upper clear acrylic TV cover using the same double sided tape and ensuring that you've cleaned not only the TV, but the rear facing portion of the acrylic cover. Now apply double sided tape to the back of the rear base deck so that it will stick to the bottom of the display once butted up against it. Now you can set up the TVs to accept the content from the media players. Follow the steps outlined in your instructions as well as seen on screen here. These steps are critical to properly set up the TVs. Should you have any questions, see your instructional file and reach out to either your field supervisor or Roy Hall for clarification. There are also images of some of the TV setup screen prompts included in your instruction document in JET. Once you've set up the TVs independently of one another, you'll need to set up the media players. You'll do this again independently of one another, one at a time, following the instructions instructions provided in your documents as well as can be seen on screen here. Again, should you have any questions or need clarification, reach out to your field supervisor or consult Roy Hall per the instructions provided to you in JET. At this point, you'll put some finishing touches on your display, including the four mom's header signs, one in the front and one on the right on the left side of the top of the display. You can also see in this photo that the car seat video is playing on the front monitor, which is critical to proper display execution. Here's an angle from the reverse side of the display. You can see the Moxie stroller easel has been placed and the video is playing Moxie stroller related content. At this point, you've successfully completed your first four moms display installation at Bye Bye Baby. Again, should you have any questions, reach out to Roy Hall either by phone or email immediately. Thank you.